Welcome to this week's discussion of the article that came out Friday. Um, we, uh, we encourage you to not just depend on this discussion for the information, but read the article because there is so much more in it that we can't, we can't uh, get it all in a, in this, uh, video but um the um this article is entitled light and i it gives a it gives a pretty good understanding of how light and darkness uh, how they affect one another and with me today is uh, my friend jean paul from canada and uh, John, why don't you, uh, JP as he's known, why don't you, uh, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, doing fine. Uh, as we were saying a little bit uh, before the, the conversation started here, got a bit of back issues, but other than that, things are great. The article was enlightening, <laughs> 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 to say the least. And, um, and uh, you know, it's um, as we go on a little, I've got a couple of questions, obviously, as I was reading the article, so we can, I get banter back and forth and it's the how, how, uh, how you got to where you got in, in, the, in, in the revelations that you got. So I, I guess for me, the first, the first little part of the article, right away, you start talking about light and darkness and that it, that it is not a fight. That, that we don't we don't fight with this that that light sort of absorbs or or we've been hoodwinked by by the religious uh, ideology that that we're always fighting about something but that said in scripture doesn't it say that yeshua which is the character that we know as jesus <laughs> uh fights in the wilderness with the devil and isn't he exact he isn't he our example uh for that fight with darkness boy talking about jumping off the cliff right at the beginning <laughs> uh, there's there's a lot that went on with with that uh with what he had to deal with in the wilderness you have to back up and get a Hebrew perspective of what the Christian religion has said is the enemy. If you go back into the Tanakh, what's been renamed the Old Testament, and you find that there is a Hebrew word, Satan, and it's with a, a small s and a hyphen in between it. And it's a verb. It's an actionable verb. And what it means is uh, anything that is adversarial, adversarially um, set against the words of Yahweh. Now, that could be anything. But primarily, it's, it's us. It's what goes on with us. It's that adversarial opposition to uh, making the words, the 10 words of Yahweh, life in us. Um, so Yeshua was born a man, just like you and I. When he opened his eyes up as a baby, he had no understanding of what was going on like any, like any baby. As a child, he was raised by his parents who were steeped in the Hebrew culture and kept the 10 words and taught him. But he also had um, access to the scriptures, to the Tanakh, because um, the Messianic writings hadn't been written yet. So from the Hebrew perspective of Satan being any adversarial opposition, when he, after he was in the wilderness for 40 days, 
the scripture says he hungered. Uh, I spoke with a, uh, with a, a medical doctor who we were talking about fasting and he said that in the fast it 40 days in a fast your body hungers uh it's just a it's just a physical um uh, thing that goes on so when it says he hungered he hadn't eaten anything for 40 days uh and he looked at the rock and he you know uh, his the voice in his head you know said you know you You've got the power to make that into bread. Well, he rebuked that with the words of the Tanakh that, that scripture says that you should, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the words of Yahweh. And in each instance that he was encountered with a temptation, this is what he was working with in the, in the wilderness, not some uh, entity that, you know, like you said in the beginning, that there's some kind of war against it. This, this was temptation. The scripture says that he was tempted in every way that we are so that he could relate to what's going on with us. He was a man and he, he, he hungered and he, you know, the, the other things that took place, he was, he was, um, resisting that temptation to to flaunt this power that he knew that he had within him because of keeping the father's 10 words um but it wasn't a some physical entity that was speaking to him this was the temptations that was going on with him so um, so, they, so sorry so basically what you're saying is it was sort of a battle within himself. It was it was the battle that he was sort of having within himself, and the scriptures that he used would be, um, I guess, appropriate interpretation, if I'm understanding correctly, as to come against the temptations that he was going through. To resist them. That's correct. He was. He was. He was reciting those words within him within himself to strengthen him and to uh, remind him of who he was and and you know that he had the power to resist this temptation right and then according to scripture once he finished this that's when he came back and really began showing light being so, light actually that when he when he finished those temptations the scripture says that the father sent angels to minister to him to feed him and to right. and to to strengthen him for his next uh foray and into the world and it was there uh that wedding that he was just sitting there, not, you know, minding his own business. Now, his mother suggested that, that he changed the water into wine. That just didn't come off the top of his head. He obviously, as, as a child and as a young adult, was, um, he, he was, he was experimenting with with where he was in 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 relation to the father and and he uh, he began to understand quickly that he was a he was the kinsman redeemer to the house of israel and in that in that place of being a kinsman redeemer he was um he understood what his purpose was and all of these other things that were going on. He was showing people, particularly the disciples, how to live in this earthly realm and manifest this light of Yahweh. Uh, Yeshua said that he didn't do anything unless he first saw the father do it. 
And um, so we have this uh, dynamic that's going on with him and his mother, you know, had watched him grow up and had watched him, you know, go through all of this process to that time. And so for her, it wasn't a, um, it wasn't something that was, you know, out of uh, character uh, for her. So from there, if Mary understood who, who he was or he, he, who he was to be, that's where the encouragement came for him to sort of walk or step into that um, role. But was well, that, that, was, that was why he, he answered her that his time had not come yet. Right. She, she, was, she was egging him on, but, yep. you know, and he went ahead and did it to appease Mary's request, his mother's request. Okay. Okay. And then according to scripture, obviously, then that sort of started the ball rolling. Um, you're, you're talking about in terms of his ministry beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, here's, here's, here's the difference with scripture from the Christian interpretation of that. It's, it's interesting when you um, look at scripture, the word ministry is never attached to a person. It, 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 it's, it's something, you know, people minister to, the, to others in the body, but it's not a, a, a ministry is, is, um, is not uh, really an accurate name for it. So he was not setting out like the Christian program is to um, acquire, you know, a following or any of that. He was, he was simply living out the words of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And as he, as he started, So the understanding is that ministry is not, it's, it's been added to in terms of, you know, something that someone has to do. Right. The, the ministry in scripture is, is a function. That's all it is. It's just a function. And um, when you, when you minister to somebody, you, you are um, um, imparting the gift of life. To that person it's not a you know christianity tells their their people coming out of these seminaries that you know you gotta gather a following and and do the finances it's interesting because yeshua he never he never dealt with any of that and yet he had everything he needed the father provided to him everything he needed um you know, if he needed, if he needed money, he got some out of the mouth of a fish. <laughs> yeah. If, if he, if he needed a donkey, he didn't go to his uh, stable that he had prepared. He, he sent one of the disciples down the road and said, you're going to find somebody that'll give you a donkey that you don't know. And which is what happened. And that's, you know, I mean, he, he had the father provided for him. But it wasn't anything that he stored up or made a plan to do. He just was living the life. Yeah. Moment by moment. Exactly. Moment by moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's faith. Well, that's, that's, a, that's practical. That's practicality. Right. Um, 
his faith was engendered by his relationship with the Father. Right. Um, faith, the definition of, of the, what has been translated as the English faith in Hebrew uh, is, um, well, I can't remember the name now, but it means... Emun emunah. Yeah, emun and it means to have trust in. That's all it is. It's, it's, we're trusting that the Father is going to be faithful to his words if we keep his words. You know, that, you know, people use that scripture um, out of uh, the Tanakh that says that the Father will not put any of these diseases on you that he did on the Egyptians, but they they don't they don't read what comes before that which says if you obey my words then you will not have these diseases come upon you that came upon the, the egyptians and uh, that's that's all yeshua was doing he was just keeping the father's words and as he came into a situation uh <clears throat> he had already been in in prayer with the father that's that's something else that Christianity says is that we got to pray for everything. You never see Yeshua praying for somebody to be healed or delivered or any of the, you know, the thing. Because it, prayer, the definition of prayer is communication between two people that love each other. And he was, he spent more time, the scripture shows us that he spent more time alone with the Father in that prayerful relationship than he did with with even with the disciples and he lived with them for three and a half years so he 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 found his strength and by trusting the father and it wasn't his faith it was it was the faith of the father it was the faithfulness of the father to show him day by day, minute by minute, you know, what was going to come next. Um, we have that same advantage. Yeshua didn't have anything, access to anything that you and I don't have access to. And um, because the scripture says in Philippians 2 that he was born a man. He was just like us. And he went through all the trials and tribulations that that any man would and the temptations so when you're looking at the life of yeshua you need to just look at it from what the words on the page say that he just you know his his movement among the disciples and among other people was just the practicality of how that light that had he had cultivated within him was manifest. Right. So as you as we're going through the article, so that first little part was just about that, you know, that struggle between light and darkness. And uh, uh, you know, I, I posed a question about his trials in, in the in the wilderness, and and in the article you mentioned about how you know everything has to be a struggle, and that's not the reality of being light. The next little part of the article talks about faith and fear, and they're not emotions. Could you explain that a little bit more? They are, faith and fear are, um, are similar, the, the, um, the exercise that goes on between faith and fear is similar to what goes on between light and darkness. When you walk into a room at night, you flip on the switch, is there a struggle for the light to become preeminent? It just is. It dispels the darkness. And it's the same with faith and fear. Most of what I was taught in Christianity came from a base of fear. If you don't do, then you're going to. Whereas in, in, in Yahweh's spirit, it's just a matter of trusting him to do what he said he would he would do uh 
but if you're if you're operating from a base of fear you're operating out of darkness out of death whereas faith is you're operating out of light out of life life and light are the opposing adversarial uh, dimension between darkness and death uh, between life and death there's no middle ground you're either in one or you're in the other and it's the same with light and darkness and faith and fear you're either operating out of fear or you're operating out of faith and fear quenches whatever uh is going on so that the father can't operate because you're you're in this place of of fear of darkness and you're calling out for the father to do these things because you're afraid of what's going to happen to you well i got news for you we're all going to die <laughs> every single one of us there's not anybody that's gotten out of this life alive except for yeshua and even he had to have a transformed body uh, transfigured body so you know that's the hope that we have that that he was our example the, the father showed us that that this is this is how he operates and if we if we die in his 10 words you know having them uh manifest in us in our in our life when we die uh the hope is that at some point he's going to resurrect us. That's what he said. So our hope is that he will be faithful to his words to do that. Just the same way he did with Yeshua. Correct. Correct. Going back to faith and fear for a minute. Um, so they're not emotions. They're sort of like a state, I guess, of being. And if I understand the article correctly, it's whatever state you're on, you're going to, um, do the action that is equated to that state exactly if you're if you're um if you're operating from a base of fear and praying for things to change you're actually operating in sorcery um uh, if if we go back again to the tanakh when moses was in front of the pharaoh and he had his bag of tricks that he was doing. The scripture says the Pharaoh sorcerers did, a, they did the same thing, except in the very end, when Moses threw his staff down and it became a snake, they threw their staffs down and became snakes. But Moses's snake ate the rest of them. And, uh, but they, but they were able to do, you know, everything, uh, maybe not in the um in the man in the abundance that it was done by moses because he did get it, the pharaoh's attention through all of that the father did so it it just you know I, when i, I when i was in sorcery i you know i saw all of these power manifestations when i came into the spirit i saw that that they they were applied similarly the mechanics of them if you will and i asked the father what's the difference and he said when you're in the darkness when you're practicing sorcery you are imposing your will upon people or circumstances because you want it to be uh, how you want it to be and even with good intentions sometimes but in in the spirit in Yahweh's spirit, in light, what that is, is how we manifest that light is to impart life to people in their circumstances, not to change it, but to, <clears throat> to, to show them that, that there is a way out of that darkness. Right. So um, sorcery is sort of a, a counterfeit, if you want to call it a uh, no, it's a real power. It's a real power. power. Uh, you know, people, people in Christianity pray and things happen. They just don't understand, you know, what 
tool they're using. And it, and it's been done for so long that nobody, nobody thinks to, to, uh, examine it. You know, the father, um, uh, said, this is how you can tell th these are, this is the test that you can, um, tell a true prophet and a false prophet, you know, in, in, the, in the messianic writings, it says to test the spirits. And, and the test is if it comes to pass, it's the father. But if it doesn't come to pass, then that guy's a false prophet. Or if it comes to pass by that false prophet, but it leads you to a way to, to worship other gods, that's not the father either. Uh, and, and so, but if we don't have the standard of light that, that Yahweh has given us, we don't know, you know, we're just being bounced around by the circumstances of life, but there is a path. There is a way that we can walk in that light and the father illuminates our path ahead of us so that we are we are walking in in the uh, in the proper manifestation of that light yeah i had an experience a few years ago uh, my background is in psychiatry so i i worked in in hospital settings and group home settings and, and different settings and you know i i actually went to the father one day and asked because you know um these these ladies and gentlemen that were in this unit, this lockdown unit, were truly having experiences. They were hearing voices and they were seeing things and they were, they knew things that, you know, they shouldn't have known. And, and, and I went to father one day and I says, what, what's, what's the difference between them and me? I've, I've, I've had these experiences. I, I see things, I, I know things, I, I hear things. And the answer was that you you know me and have me amen that that was that was the that's the answer i got that was the difference the in both sides of the book in the tanakh uh, there's a psalm that says be still and know that i'm yahweh mm. and then yeshua says in john 17 3 that this is eternal life to know the father and the one whom he sent, the Yeshua. So you, you gotta you gotta ask, okay, well, how do I get to know them? Well, the first thing you do is you set aside all of these ideas that and theologies that you've been taught through Christianity, um, and you wait on the Father. You clear your table, you you know, you you give him a clean slate to to do what he wants to do with you and you you know you can go back in into uh, exodus 34 and um, there he he proclaims his nature the first thing he does is give the 10 words to moses but then it says that he passed he put moses in the cleft of a rock and passed before him he had to hide him because this light is so brilliant, it's a consuming fire. And if you're not, if you're not light like he is, you get you get burnt up. You, you know, you you get dispelled like the darkness does um, when you flip on a light switch. And mm. and he saw the father's back. Well, if he has a back, he must have a front. And we see in the Tanakh that it talks about seeing the face of the father and all kinds of things like that. We, we have access to the father. If it's a big little word, if we keep his words, when he, uh, in, in, uh, Jeremiah, uh, seven, he was talking to the elders of Israel and he said, when I brought you out of Egypt, did I require of you sacrifices and offerings? It says, no, I, I said, obey my voice that it might go well with you. 
and uh, jumping over into the Messianic writings. Yeshua did the same thing. He said, I don't speak anything unless I first hear the Father speaking. He was, he had immersed himself in the nature of Father. Uh, that nature in, in Exodus 34, 7 is spelled out, you know, goodness and mercy and loving kindness and forgiving sin and all of these good things that we think of him. But it also says that the sins of the father are passed on to subsequent generations until that sin is stopped. And, you know, people are looking at the world, the chaos in the world today, and they're saying, oh, this is the end time. God's coming in to destroy everything. He's not going to destroy anything. That's not in his nature. His nature is to love and to build up. Um, so you have to, you have to count, you have to, you have to know who he is in order to be able to uh, manifest who he is in the in the chaos of circumstance that's, that continually flows through the world. Can you know him strictly by scripture? Well, when I met him, I had no scripture, no religion, nothing. I was just a punk kid on a dirt road shaking my fist at the heaven and demanding that he appear to me <laughs> he did <laughs> you know the creator of the universe is, is is answering you know this rebellious youngster and i knew it was the father because i mean every fiber in my being knew that he was and he spoke a couple of words to me uh, he said, you know, I was involved in sorcery and all that power stuff. And he said, Harold, if you want to see power, follow me and I'll show you what power is all about. That's all he said. And it, that was all it was needed. I mean, it, it radically changed me. I didn't realize it in the moment, just how much it had changed me, but it did. And I turned around and went back home, um, which is the definition of repentance. Repentance is not some ver verbal uh, assent. Uh, repentance is when you turn 180 degrees in your behavior and you and you you move in the opposite direction. And that's what I did today. And and I'm assuming it also consists of a change of mind, behavior and and mind change repenting would that be would that be an accurate uh, statement change the thought process or yeah but it wasn't i, I didn't sit down and, and decide mm -hmm. okay i'm changing my thought process i was just i was just trying to get out of the scrape that i was in and he 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 did he led me out of it but i was i was caught up real quickly in the in the net of christianity um <laughs> and it captivated me for 30 years. Yeah. I didn't know the difference. And it wasn't right. until I was in Christianity that I began to see that what was being said wasn't according to what the scriptures were said. Somebody had handed me a, a, the Bible early on and said, everything you want to know about the Father, about Yahweh is in the book. So I just immersed myself in those scriptures and that's where I began to, to see that I can tell when it's the Father because if he speaks it, it comes to pass. Not what I'm imagining and wanting to happen, but, but what he actually says. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to hear the voice of the Father, uh, I got an email from a guy the other day that said that if you want to, if you want to hear the voice of the Father, just speak his words out loud <laughs> and, you can, and you'll hear him. <laughs> I mean, that's a very simplistic approach, but you know, again, he says, if you keep my words, then these things will happen. And that's, that's the caveat to all of it. Are we going to keep his 10 words? Yeshua was every time he was asked, 
uh, how do I get eternal life? He said, keep the 10 words of the Father. And he even repeated them so that they, there was no misunderstanding as to what he was saying. Right, right. But that's, yeah, yeah. As we well know, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, Christians don't, don't really believe that those still exist and we're not under the law and we're under grace and all that kind of stuff. So you, you, you had a spiritual experience. Me meeting Father was, was a spiritual experience. Something happened to you spiritually and then that led you down the path of of wanting to find or get to know this spirit this 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 light i had a burning desire within me to know truth mm -hmm. at the time i met him i didn't realize that truth was was a he a who it was you know i just figured i'd know it when i when i saw it and i did you know mm -hmm. when he, when he spoke those words to me, it, 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 it propelled me to want to know him further. And um, that's not to say that I was perfect in all of my ramblings and stuff. I was just, I was wandering. I was trying to find what truth really was and, and to, to take all of these things that people were saying and trying to assimilate them into, into what they were saying was truth, but I couldn't find it. I could not find it in scripture and I didn't find it in uh, wow. manifest in, in my being. Right. <laughs> so all I did was, was make me more determined, you know, to find it. Um, but it wasn't until I came to an end of myself of all of my ventures, you know, um, I was I was in a I was in a dark place, and the father. When I had uh, we talked about this in the last uh, article, deception. When when I um, when I uh, began it, to be engaged in the in this spirit realm i saw the face of deception for what it was it was a dark labyrinth where where you go in there and and as much as you might want to get out you can't find the way out because it's just dark and that scared me i mean that, that of, of every, anything that was what scared me more more than anything and i said father if you ever find me in a place like that of course in, in my mind i didn't I didn't think I would, but I said to him, you've got, if you find me in a place like that, I give you permission to do whatever it takes to get me in. And 30 years later, that's what I found myself in was this dark place uh, where I didn't have anything. You know, I had, I had seen that Christianity was, was a lie and, but I didn't know enough about the father to be able to, uh, embrace his life but then he he reached underneath that barrel that you know people put trash in i wasn't in the barrel i was on the underside of it and he you know he pulled me out of there and set me back on my feet and i am i'm just eternally grateful for, hmm. for he didn't have to do that but he remembered that prayer that i'd said and he gave me a get out of jail free card and <laughs> really that's in there. I mean, I wasn't in a physical jail, but I was, I was in so much bondage that it was just, it was horrible. Yeah. And, um, and he, he brought me out of that. And, uh, so ever since then I have, I have, you know, really tried first to know him. And then to be able to walk in the in the precepts that that he sets forward. So to truly know him is is like a, a double a double thing. There's there's the spirit side, and then there's the word side. And then we sort of have to put those things together. Well, like his so. words his words are spirit. You know, there's no Holy Spirit. That's a that's a live Christianity. There's only one spirit, and his name is Yahweh. And the way we come to know him, his words are spirit. 
And he's given us the 10 words to, to show us how to remain in the presence of this spirit so that we too can become, you know, light the same way he is light. Because if you're not light, you're going to be consumed by the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. That is true. So interestingly enough, you, you answered the question that I had is, how do you truly get to know Yahweh? And you've explained it <laughs> quite well, sharing some personal experiences. I too come a bit of the same kind of background, uh, drugs and alcohol, got out of that, ended up getting sober, was led into spiritual things, and then got involved in what they call the occult and voices and all that kind of stuff and 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 met someone in christianity that that introduced me to spirit there was still an experience there and for me also 20 years later i i by his grace <laughs> i uh, i found my way out but it was it was it was quite quite the journey un understandably so in in the um in the article you also talk about uh, the word exousia the Greek word exousia. Could you explain that a little bit more? Which is translated as the English. Excuse me? It's translated as the English word. Uh, presence, I believe. Okay. Uh, so you've got, you, in, in, in the article, it says that exousia is 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 um is uh stated as being power of choice okay but but later on you also say that it has another meaning meaning power of influence right uh, so Susia being its presence meaning it gives you that power it gives you access to who he is and that's where the power resides um exuse to to make it a choice he's given each one of us um the power of choice uh, the, the free will and choice to do what we want uh and we can either choose to go by our own determination or we can choose to move in his light, which is spirit. As we become light, and that spirit is manifesting itself through us, it influences everybody that comes in contact with it. Um, the same way when, when you turn on lights in, the, in a darkened room, everybody can see, everybody is, is um exposed to that light and you being light in these circumstances influences the behavior of everybody else and that and that behavior becomes either they get curious and want to get closer to the light or they are repelled by it light and darkness cannot abide in the same space at the same time so if your light and in it in your particularly in your household if you're seeing people being repelled by that light it's because they're making choices not to move toward it that's a again a very simplistic uh, explanation but it's basically true nice. going back uh, going back before i forget it to uh, hearing his voice people ask me how do you how do you come to hear his voice and my answer is is that my wife can pick up the phone and call me from any place on the planet say one word and i instantly know who it is how can i do that because i spent a lot of time with that girl <laughs> and it's the same way with the father if you want to hear his voice start spending a lot of time with him just you and he alone and and you will come to know to hear it and to know who it is that's speaking to you mm. yes great great example I, I i can concur because 
the same things happened to me when, you know, had an experience a few years ago where I was praying for my son and uh, he told me to stop. And uh, I know that in mainstream Christianity that that would be a lot of people saying, no, that was the devil <laughs> or Satan or, or the dry or whatever. But, but I knew his voice. I, I knew that it was him talking. And he wanted to show me something about, about prayer and about my son and about my relationship. And uh, he showed me a part of my heart where I was praying for, for, for me just as much as I was praying for my son because his illness was a burden for me and I hadn't seen it. And, and, when, and when I saw it, I, I cried because I love my son. And, and that's when I realized that, you know, sometimes I don't know my heart as well as I think I do. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to see good things happen to the people that we love. And so we are tempted to exert our will upon people and, and circumstances, not understanding that if, if you don't hear the, the father say to do that, it, you're, you're, you're moving into sorcery. Uh, and you know, people wonder why they pray over people and they, they still get sick and they still die. And it's because those people have not made a choice to understand and live in light. And, you know, um, had a woman was asking me to pray for her sister that had stage four cancer uh, they were giving her, you know, 14 months to live. And actually she only lived 24 hours. And, and, you know, this woman was wanting me to pray for her sister that she'd be healed. Well, that's not my decision to make. That's, that's her choices that she's made in, in life. And, you know, at the last minute she was on her bed and she was saying, yeah, I want to know Yahweh. Well, it's too late. She's died already. And, you know, this, this walk with the Father is, is a manifestation of who he is in this present, present time um, to change our behavior and, and, and what we manifest. And you can't do that overnight. <laughs> you just, it's, a, it's an impossibility. You've got to be able to walk toward light and divest yourself of all of these mannerisms and um, manifestations that, that you have thought was right and good, but they're in opposition this adversarial opposition to the words of Yahweh. And it's, that's, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just, you know, that's the so, so, so the, the opposition or the, the, the adversarial is, is that, is that in, in spirit also? Like, is there, is there a spiritual force like that? Or is that just strictly, us being adversarial to the will of the Father. That, that, well, you have to understand from the Hebrew perspective, the scripture says there is one spirit, and his name is Yahweh. Uh, as, it, as humans, we don't, we don't have a spirit that's intrinsic to us. That's Greek thought. It comes out of the, the books of Plato. Uh, what, when, uh, when Adam was in the garden, Yahweh said, you can eat of any tree in this garden, except the one, which is the knowledge of what is good and what is evil. And he said, on the day that you eat of that tree, you will die. Now he ate of the fruit of the tree, but he didn't die. He lived to be 930 years old. So does that mean Yahweh is a liar? Or maybe what we need to do is rethink what it means to die. 
when you're when you're in life you're in life when you when <laughs> there's no middle ground between life and death when when you're in death that if you with with adam what happened was the father breathed the breath of life in him and then when he ate of that fruit his it was the spirit that died the spirit of the father which was why he had to be separated into the world <clears throat> and and it's why yeshua needed to be born as as a human, um, uh, as a man, with that corrupted blood from Adam, and it, it was it was the his his blood was the exchange um, for the father to be able to come into that tomb and breathe new life into him. And Leviticus tells us that the life is in the blood. So when he breathed that life into him, it became his blood again. But at this time, it was a pristine blood. And he was able to keep it because he kept the words of the father. So when we are talking about life and death, we're talking about either being in the, the life of Yahweh's words. And if we're not, we're just dead. We don't have spirit to ourselves. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of other scriptures, but yes, yes, yes. So then I guess the next thing is that if, if there's not, I guess, the, the adversarial opponent in terms of, of darkness or spirit, well, then can that, that evil or, or darkness uh, contaminate us? Or I think you wrote that, you, you wrote about that in, in, the, uh, in the article that, that, you know, a lot of people think that we're going to get infected or contaminated or by this, by this evil these evil spirits or the, or the evil that's in the world. How, how is that? Um, because even Christianity talks a lot about, you know, being, you know, possessed or, 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 uh, demonized or whatever you want to call it. So how is that, is that a reality or, or there, there are demons in the world. You should have dealt with them all the time. Um, and they look for, people to inhabit and if we uh if we don't this if we we need to be in the kingdom in order to resist that and in the kingdom there are 10 gates the 10 words of the father and if we keep all those gates closed those demons can't get in they can't they can't come and bother us if we leave just one of them ajar a little bit and think that you know we're, we're good and righteous and that's not going to affect us. What it does is it allows one to come in. And Yeshua said that if, if, if a spirit is, um, is, uh, chased off and he comes back and he finds the house neat and clean and everything in order, uh, he doesn't just bring himself. He goes and gets, seven others that are worse than him and comes in because the door is still ajar. But it's, it's not a, it's not a, um, if we're walking in spirit and we're keeping those gates, keeping his words, um, those, those demons, uh, they don't want to be around. You know, when you come out of a, a, a theater, a dark theater that you've been in for a couple hours and you come out into bright light, what's the first thing that happens? Well, my vision goes a little wonky. You squint because yeah. that light hurts. Well, just think, you know, these demons live in darkness. And if you're in light moving around, it hurts them. <laughs> Now they may stick around and uh, and and endure the the pain if if you know they think that there's a way that they can get in. But if if the doors are kept shut, if the gates are kept shut, the ten words are are being observed, and they don't have any way in. Eventually, they're going to leave. They're going to go try to find you know easier pickings, and there's a whole lot of them in the world. So um, no, it's not a struggle between light and darkness. It just, there is none. 
you're either in light or you're in darkness. You're in life or you're in death. All of these people walking around in the world that don't know him, they're just, you know, breathing, walking, dead people. Through, through, my, through my years and through my walk, Father's brought me to a lot of different places and shown me a few different things. But again, I mentioned earlier that I, I, I used to be in the mental health field. And uh, just one day I was, uh, I was in my office and I dealt with a lot of people. And uh, one of my clients came in and sat on the chair and all of a sudden started vibrating. And he was vibrating quite, you know, quite violently on the chair. And I was wondering if he wasn't overdosing or, you know, something like that. And all of a sudden I saw this black shadow come out of the sky and zoom right through the ceiling. And right after that stopped, he just, he sort of came to himself and said, what just happened? And, you know, it's funny because in Christianity, there would have been this, this trying to pray for him or this, or, or you have to have a discernment or you have to know that he's there or, or you have to engage with it or whatever. None of that with, none of that happened. He just walked into the room. You know, that's, the, that's what I found with Yeshua, that when he stepped into an arena where there was demonic activity, all he said was, go, be gone. And they left. The first thing that happened was they would come and if they didn't come and bow down at his feet, they, they at least gave him some verbal um, uh, acquiescence of, of who he was. I mean... <laughs> They had no. They had no choice. Uh, they had to. They had to leave, and he. He didn't. He didn't do battle with them because he knew what was preeminent. Light is preeminent over darkness, and that's what you experienced. You were being light, and you didn't have to do anything. The Father was doing it because He was using you as the instrument through which to touch that other guy. And I'm sure today you don't even know where he is or what happened to him. No, I don't. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's okay. That's because yeah. he's in the father's hands. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That was, yes. So there we have it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's light and it's darkness. And, and, and there we have it. So read the article. And if you, uh, if you have any questions, um, my uh, email address is at the bottom of that article. Just uh, send me an email and, and I'll be happy to converse with you. Um, and uh, so until next time, I guess we get to say Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, 